Hey guys, Monday after LS Fest. Had a real successful weekend. Friend of mine, Kenny, uh, that owns KP Customs in Bowling Green, Kentucky. He's got a little fourth gen. Been trying to go sevens the whole time he's had the car. Finally did that. <laughs> Rich Rules has been working on his Badalac, as they're calling it. It's the old burning right burnout truck uh, with had the Nitrous 5.3 in it. They pulled the truck body off of it and put a Cadillac body on there. It did its first successful burnout. And then Dr. Tunamal did a killer burnout. JH won the burnout competition, which is good. So I had a fun weekend, had um, between Cletus and Cars and LS Fest and then my house guest between the two. It was, it's, it's been a fun, but tiring, like last 14 days or so. But anyways, uh, let's head to the shop right now. I think I've got a 2015 or 16 model Silverado to the tune with the BTR 220 cam. So hang around and let's, let's handle that thing. All right, so we're at the shop now. The truck I'm gonna be tuning is that uh, blue, I think it's 2016 Chevy Silverado. So normally in a video, I'd go over all the upgrades the thing has, but I figure this time we'll just have the guy who actually built the engine tell us what all was done to it. If you're a car guy like me, you'll probably recognize the guy. Um, he was the host of Horsepower TV for like 20 years. His name is Mike Galley, and uh, he's essentially the guy that got me into LSs and, and wanting to be like this anyway. So let's get the truck into the shop, and I'll get it set up in our normal spot where I pull the read file, but I'll have him come over and tell you what all was done to it. All right, so we have the engine builder here, Mike Galley. Yes. Mike, what all is done to the truck? All right, this little thing went from a 5.3 uh, to the 6.2. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a stock crank in it, uh, but we did upgrade the rods. So it's got BTR uh, H-beams in it, um, SRP pistons, and uh, out back uh, converters, 3200 stall, mm -hmm. BTR Trinity intake, which is pretty new. Yeah. Uh, I think released in the last, what, Yeah, month I, I so. haven't seen anybody have one yet, so. Yeah, cool little uh, cold air on it. Mm -hmm. And um, the truck was bought fairly cheap for what it is. It started out as a, just a basic work truck. Mm -hmm. And the guy wanted up the power and have some fun in a, you know, regular cab short bed. Mm -hmm. um, so it's got long tubes, full exhaust. And, what, two, uh, 220 cam? Yeah, 220 cam, BTR. Yeah. Phaser lockout, right? This Phaser lockout. So this one still moves, has BVT, right? Yeah, yep. it does. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what it does and how it, you know, acts with that new intake. So, Sweet. Cool. I'm gonna get to Have fun with it. Thank you, sir. All right, so as always, we're gonna jump in the truck and do our read file. If I can not sit on this cable. The downside of having a 10 foot cable is I sit on it, trip on it all the time. Anyway, so this truck I have already tuned before. Um, the truck was brought to this shop for a 6.2 swap and cam and all that stuff. Customer wants to prep it for a pro charger. So he had asked, you know, what all modifications he should do for a pro charger. So anyways, they had done a stock intake, stock throttle body and like a little bitty, like two and three quarter inch cat back. And it, it just didn't make the power. Um, so the customer, before he even picked it up, he works on an offshore oil rig. So before he even picked it up, he, he had talked to me and he's like, hey, what should we do to make this thing actually make some power? So of course my recommendation was to go ahead on and do the truck trading intake and do the true dual speed engineering exhaust. This camshaft, it wants the airflow. So that's the modifications we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be tuning for it. Um, the truck is gonna make more power than it did before. Now again, with some Mustang Dyno and this being a 6L80 truck with a 342 gear, we're gonna dyno this thing in third gear uh, with the torque converter locked. So don't expect it to make crazy power numbers. Um, because of that, it doesn't mean that the engine's not making the power. The engine's making the horsepower that it should make. It's just not gonna reflect on the dyno today. But the biggest thing that I'm wanting to see is I'm wanting to see the gains, and we want to make sure drivability is good. So today we're gonna work on the transmission stuff, and we're gonna work on the throttle response, and we're gonna get the MAF curve and V table dialed in for this intake manifold and throttle body combination, as well as for the new exhaust. So anyways, hop in the truck, and we're gonna go and do the read file. All right, so as always, we're gonna go up to this little green arrow up top. We're gonna do the read file on it. Um, 
Gen 5 trucks don't have uh, the CCOM or the fuel pump control module. So we, we can actually just read this one out completely as it is and you don't have to worry about those extra credits uh, that you'll have to on some of the Gen 4 trucks and then some of the Corvettes. So let's get this thing read out and I'll be right back with you. All right, so we're in our tune folder. Um, right now what we gotta do is we need to modify the uh, throttle body for the upgraded throttle body size. All right, so if you look at this max area right here, um, this is the number from the 6.2 stock throttle body. I think the 5.3s are like in the 3600 range or something, but anyway, so this is the stock uh, 6.2 throttle body size. So we need to adjust this for the LT5 throttle body. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the stock file for a 2000, let's do a 2019 uh, Corvette ZR1. Uh, and obviously ZR1 is the only one that's actually had the LT5 throttle body. So you're gonna notice that this max area right here, see how it's in green? That's because it's different uh, in the ZR1 file. So ZR1 file, it's 5054 is the number. So I'm gonna just click this button over here and that shows our difference. And you can actually just highlight and click zero. And so now we're at the 5054. So let's key it on. I'm gonna save this and let's load this file in and get the truck idling. Tune files in, let's get her fired up. So let's open up our scanner. Uh, I have my Gen 5 specific channels opened up. Um, if you guys, I mean, kind of look through here as we go today and kind of look through and see what I'm actually data logging. Um, the truck is probably fairly warmed up by now. I always had to pull it into the shop and so anyways, so right now what I'm doing is just kind of getting an idea and seeing where idle torque is. So when you're tuning on these trucks, the best thing to do, if you want to learn how to tune a cammed version of one of these trucks is just data log a stock truck and see what it wants. So what I've learned is in the stock trucks, they want to idle right around zero foot pounds of torque. So what I do is I will modify idle torque until I can get it to where we're close to zero foot pounds right here. So you'll see we're not too far off right now. Um, the truck's 176 degrees. So as it warms up, this is going to come down some. One of the tricks, and this is one thing that a lot of tuners don't understand, and I'll go in and show you, is um, you can log zero pedal torque, zero pedal engine torque right here. So what I've learned is, is not only do they want to idle at zero foot pounds of torque here, all LTs want to be right around zero uh, pedal torque with the number zero. In park or in neutral, obviously. So you'll see that I'm going to try to keep this as close to zero as possible today. Um, negative, like this number can go negative or positive. It's basically showing you how much the ECU is having to manipulate the spark, uh, which spark is immediate torque or predicted, which is predicted is throttle body torque. So we want to keep these numbers pretty tight together and that's where we're going to get our good clean idle. Now, as some of you guys are watching, you're probably noticing my timing advance and you're probably thinking, man, that thing's only at zero degrees. Again, if you data log a factory truck, they like to idle right around zero degrees. I'm sure GM is doing that for not only emissions, uh, but for fuel efficiency itself. So I'm going to keep this truck idling just how GM would have done it. If it was a stocky, or if it was on a standalone, you know, ECU like Holly or something like that, I would probably have it idling at a 10 to 12 degrees. But zero is completely fine for this truck. It's going to have plenty of idle torque. Um, it's not going to have a super strong smell out the tailpipe from, you know, um, the camshaft overlap. So anyway, so that's where we're going to stay. Everybody has their own opinion. If you or your tuner or somebody else says, oh, I'm wrong for not having it idle up at 10 or 12 degrees on stock ECU, that's, that's your own opinion. Um, I tune trucks all day, every day. Um, this is probably the most common vehicle that I tune, and I try to mimic OE as much as humanly possible. We want to try to make sure these things are clean, make good power, make sure everything's happy. So anyways, everything looks pretty good. We're close on short-term fuel trims. Um, my VE table was a little bit off. Um, if you look, I actually have some calculations that I'm going to start to show. I'm going to add it more into these videos, but I have some channels to where I can actually be math only and actually tune V-table at the same time. That's one of the ways that I'm able to get these, these vehicles in and out as fast as humanly possible. This truck, obviously I've tuned it before. Uh, I tuned it on stock intake manifold. 
But had I not tuned it, it still would only take me four or five hours to get a really solid tune up in this truck. And it's just because over the years, I figured out how to actually make this stuff happen. So today I'll be tuning in primarily, I'll be tuning in MAF only mode. I will be tuning the VE table at the same time. And then we will go back to the factory hybrid mode with V and MAF at the end of the day. And then I will be rocking through some trans tuning stuff. Again, this trans has already been tuned as well, but I'm sure it's gonna need some touch up with the new intake manifold and the new exhaust as that's going to not only alter the torque model, so the shift pressures are gonna be a little bit different, um, but also we're gonna obviously wanna shift this thing up higher. You know, the factory, I think it peaked out like 6,200 RPM or so with, the, with that manifold. It's probably gonna want 6,900 or 7,000 a day. So we'll, let's get this thing on the dyno and let's see where we're at from there. So we got the truck up in the air. As always, we're gonna slide underneath it, double check everything. Tires are new. Um, exhaust is all new. That stuff looks pretty good. Um, so what they did on this is they actually removed the speed engineering mufflers. And now this is an old muffler combination from a different truck. So you'll see it's a, it looks a little bit worn. Um, but anyways, this uh, muffler setup is a 30 inch Magnaflow muffler. So the, the speed engineering mufflers, they, uh, they drone pretty bad and they're, they're almost too loud for some guys. So, but anyway, so it's true dual three inch, uh, front to back, off the inch and seven eighths headers. Um, drive shaft, everything's in good shape. Rear tires are good. So let's get the uh, wide band put in. So the good thing about the speed engineering exhaust is they put this O2 sensor bung in here, perfect for wide band. So it is three quarter inch. Uh, so just a regular three quarter 19, we'll take it off. Obviously, I just drove this truck up on, onto the rack. So, get this out. Apparently, I have no grip with my gloves. I get off. <laughs> anyway, so. So, that's there. So as always, four straps in the back. Two going front to back and two is the X. Centered. So now we tighten up our X and tighten up our front to back straps. This one too. All right. Let's wash hands, get in the truck. All right, guys, so we're up in the truck on the dyno. Um, dyno is in vehicle simulation mode. Fans are on, exhaust fans on, truck's up to temperature. Um, biggest thing on the dyno for me is gonna be making sure my V and MAF curve is, is taken care of. Timing, I pretty much know about where this truck's gonna wanna be. VVT-wise, BTR actually sh even has their, their VVT numbers on their website that it's gonna want. Um, so you can actually get on their website and get on their PDF file and then you'll see the, the VVT numbers that they want. Sometimes they'll need a little bit of tweaking for, but I found for the most part, they're pretty much dead nuts on. So anyway, so we're up on the dyno, uh, again, like I said, we're in vehicle simulation mode. So let's go on and cruise this truck. Stability track is off. And so I've already added some fuel to this truck. I've added like 8% up top because I know it's gonna want at least seven or 8% more with the exhaust and the intake manifold. 
So I'm going to get this thing up in a third gear. I may actually have to, this truck actually has LT4 injectors and LT4 fuel pump. Because we're, like, so we're planning on this thing going uh, with a pro charger here over the winter time. So right now, like I said, my biggest concern is, is let's, uh, let's maximize NA power pretty decent. Again, it's on pump gas. It's not on ethanol. So it's not going to make all the power it's capable of making, but it's going to run pretty good. So anyway, so we're up in third gear. Um, this is going to be a heavily, heavily loaded third gear pull as I'm really wanting to make sure I have good, accurate data on the math and the VE table. So up here, up top, you'll see I'm doing EQ error versus math. We are in math only mode, but we are also tuning V at the same time. So you'll see my V numbers here. You'll see where I'm a little off where these numbers don't mesh up. I'm going to dial that in later on the street. I don't like to steady state these trucks uh, as heavily as I do like on the stick shift cars, just because it creates a lot of trans heat, a lot of engine heat. Um, also, if you guys see the temperature and you see it's 216 degrees, I've done the math on these trucks, uh, mile per gallon wise and power wise. It's better to have, run these trucks warmer for fuel economy. The, the three or four more horsepower that you're going to pick up, you're not going to feel, uh, you, you can't feel that small of a percentage of power gain on a 400 horsepower truck. You just can't. So I prefer to run them a little bit warmer and have them be better for emissions and better for fuel mileage. So anyways, uh, everything's good to go. We're on uh, simulation mode. So like I said, it's going to be a long pull. Let's hammer down. We'll run it to probably 63 or 6400 and I'll go on and shut her down. So if you're watching EQ actual versus EQ commanded, we're pretty damn close. All right, so I'm going to lift. Also, if y'all are noticing my uh, speed, it's in kilometers per hour. Um, and the reason why that is, let me unlock this converter and slow it back, slow it back down. Um, the reason why that is, is because when you're doing a torque model adjustment, here, I'm going to stop this log and I'll show you. When you're doing torque model adjustment, so you're going to go under engine, torque management, driver demand, and then this map A, um, this axis up at the top is actually in kilometers per hour. So anytime I'm doing torque adjustments, my data logger is going to be in kilometers per hour. And then once I'm done with torque model adjustments and VE table and all that stuff, if everything looks okay and it drives okay, then I'll switch my data logger over to mile per hour and then we'll start to tune on the trans shift points as well. So anyways, let's, uh, we've got the log stopped. The truck is stopped. I'm going to let it run for a minute and let the engine kind of cool down, let the fans run. Uh, math curve is looking good. So I need a touch, I mean, just a touch more fuel up top. Yeah, two, a two percent, three percent is all I'm like. Again, this is this is the showing the percentage that I'm off from commanded. So if we look at this pool as we're coming through here, um, you're never going to be 100% perfect all the time. But um, so that's that's whatever it comes in. So we'll look like the accurate data is going to be like right here. So I mean, if you look, we're within one two percent pretty much the whole way. Um, so we get up top, which like obviously I, I guessed at adding fuel. So we're pretty close at it. So now let's check my VE table. Um, and again, I'll show you guys this. Um, this will be in a different style of format of video. This will be in my video where I'm sitting at my desk at my house and I'll explain you how to set everything up. Obviously, I am a professional tuner and this is a customer's vehicle. So I, I can't take you know an hour and show you guys how to do this while i'm tuning on the vehicle not yet maybe one day maybe the channel will get big enough where one day i can actually just have a customer vehicle for a day or two and actually do all this stuff live and teach you at the same time um, but anyways this is my percentage off that we are on ve so obviously it's going to be a little bit less because we have the shorter in runner intake manifold uh, mid-range it did definitely pick up and it definitely picked up up top so you, like we talked about my ve table uh, or my uh, gen 3 v for dummies video this is realistically power gains right here. So six, seven percent gains. That's that's really good gains for for just some extra bolt-ons. So let's make these adjustments, and we'll probably start getting into some power pulls, um, and we'll go from there. I had to stop and get a drink. All right. So we're going to take this math uh, data, and we're going to input this in. I'm going to start. I'm going to start at 7950 hertz. So we're going to highlight 7950 hertz. And we're going to work our way over to the 10,200 hertz. And we're going to copy it. And we're going to transfer this directly to the math table. So what did I say? 79, 7950. Um, let's say where we were at. So we're going to go to 7950. Right click. 
I'm gonna multiply it by a percent. And as we talked about with trend lines in one of my other videos, we're gonna follow it up. So 2.88%, um, we're gonna add that up here too. So 1.0288. So this is basically, we're almost 11% up on fuel on the math curve. So that's, that's pretty damn good. So anyways, I'm gonna take, go to my VE table. And again, my VE table, I'm gonna work on it more on the street because again, it's the only way for me to keep this trans and everything happy temperature wise. So I'm gonna take this and copy it. And we copied it from 2,500 to 6,500. So I'm gonna go into my VE table. So you're gonna go up to edit, virtual volumetric efficiency. And I'll blow this up. And I said we were at, uh, oh, I need to switch. So, all right, so just so you're aware, um, the VE table or virtual, virtual volumetric efficiency table is gonna come back to whatever you were last working on. Like as far as if I was like the last LTV uh, vehicle, if it was on two bar or boosted, um, it's gonna reference that. So you can click right here and you can adjust where you're at. So obviously we're NA. So we only need to go to a P ratio of one. So that's that's one thing that you guys are gonna notice on the Gen 5 stuff is, so this is, this is P ratio, which means map over barrow. So that's where Gen 5 vehicles really started to get good uh, compared to the Gen 3 and Gen 4 stuff because they added a barrow pressure sensor in here. So we can actually do these tunes and these tunes are gonna be valid even if you live in Denver or if you live in Florida because it's all based off P ratio. So if your barometric pressure is 83 kPa key on engine off, then that means that wide open throttle, 83 kPa is gonna be roughly what wide open throttle is. So your P ratio is gonna be one. So it just, it really helps with, with keeping these things dialed in. Um, so we're gonna go to 2,500. I'm gonna right click, uh, multiply by a percent. And it made those changes. And again, we're looking at trend lines. So we're at 6% added up here. So we're gonna add 6% up here. And I'm gonna pull up my 3D so you can see. So you'll see where we're, where we're gaining power at which is where we should have gained power with this intake manifold and exhaust combination. That's the cool part about V is just being able to see this stuff. So anyways, I'm going to take this and I'm just going to drag this down and we're going to interpolate uh, horizontally or vertically. And so now you'll see our V table is like that and it's got a little bit of a peak. Now when you see those peaks like that, do not ignore them. A lot of guys will think that an engine's power is smooth. It is not 100% smooth. You're gonna have uh, certain RPMs where you're gonna actually have increased velocity from air mass because it's bouncing off the valve and it's actually gonna speed up. And so your camshaft and your intake manifold runner length, all that stuff's gonna dictate that, but you may have some peaky power areas. So do not, don't ignore that. So now we're gonna click calculate coefficients. You're gonna see the HP tuners is gonna naturally smooth that out. So that should get us in the ballpark though. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight this and like, as I told you guys before I uh, always want to be uniform technically we should have made that change under manifold switch open um, but GM doesn't use any of these and just to make sure that that the definitions are correct in HP tuners we change them all and that we know we we're, we that way we know we're making an accurate change in our VE table so we're gonna load this in and I'll be right back with you guys all right guys so we're back in the truck um, the dyno is now set to actually do a legit power pool um, obviously i just needed just that one little bit of a, of a solid third gear rip under vehicle simulation to make sure that my stuff is close because again this truck was already tuned now for those of you guys that are really asking me about gen 5 stuff i promise you i will break each one of these things down in individual videos but again it's going to be in my other format of video so right now um, we're going to do a power pull. So I'm going to make sure, let me make sure I have the AC stuff set off. So one thing I want you guys to understand is I, I do love AC, but I always make sure that they're, they're shut off whenever I do a power pull. And GM from the factory in the Gen 5 vehicles doesn't have this set up. So you're going to go to system, AC, and if you're racing your truck and you had your AC on and the Gen 5 stuff, they don't shut the compressor off like they used to. So if you want to, I always do this disable RPM at 5250, um, re-enable at 5200, and then I'll do disable TPS at 95% and re-enable at 90. So when I go wide open throttle on this truck, the AC compressor is gonna disconnect. So I would highly recommend y'all do that in your trucks. Just that way, that way you don't have to worry about forgetting to turn off your AC. Cause I mean, the AC compressor at that RPM, I mean, it very well could be worth 15, 20, 30 horsepower. 
So anyway, so we're just uh, gonna go in and do a, I'm gonna do a third gear pull locked in this thing. And the eddy brake is gonna be adjusted where the pull shouldn't be as long. I don't like doing those super long pulls for power pulls. So we're gonna get this thing in the third gear. So we'll verify, yep, we are in third gear. And I'm going to, like I said, to get it to hold at any RPM, you can click command third gear. We lock the converter. And so now I can go wide open throttle at any RPM and it is not going to downshift. All right, so let's do a, do a pull. We're gonna do it to 6,600. Dino is slowing down. Let's unlock this converter. Stop the log. Now again, because I didn't have this truck as loaded as what it was during our uh, math tuning pull, um, the truck's going to show a little bit leaner. That is 100% normal. We like the heavier load is would be more correct for air fuel ratio on the street. Um, so let's hop out and let's see what the truck made. I also, next pull, I need to put my camera outside. I forgot to do that. So anyway, let's check out these numbers. All right, guys, and again, before I show you the dyno numbers, remember, this is a Mustang dyno. It's automatically 10% lower than a dyno jet. I have not done anything to fudge numbers on this truck or any other vehicle that I've ever tuned. Um, a, lot of, a lot of tuners like to fudge numbers and show all this crazy horsepower. This truck, if this was a stick shift C7 Corvette, would show way higher for power numbers. But again, we're in third gear torque converter lock, super heavy rear wheels and tires. Um, but this truck with the little two and three quarter inch cat back that was on there and the stock LA6 manifold made like 258 or, or sorry, not 258, like 358 horsepower and like 360 torque. So whatever this thing is showing is the gains from the exhaust and the intake manifold and that is it. So let's get on over here and check these numbers out. All right, so we are at 421.8 horsepower, 366.7 foot-pounds of torque. So again, if we were on a Dynajet, that'd be like 460, 470 wheel, um, but we're not. So y'all are just gonna have to bear with me on the numbers. As you'll learn with this, if you're watching videos on my channel, every vehicle is gonna make lower power than you think. It is just because it's what the dyno says. There is no industry standard for uh, chassis dynos, but this is the dyno that I choose to use for my tuning because it is the best with the control of eddy brake. So anyways, 421.8 horsepower, that's roughly a 60 horsepower gain from the intake manifold and the exhaust. So not bad gains at all. All right, so as y'all saw, 421.8 horsepower, 366 foot pounds of torque. Truck's gonna be a really good running truck. Um, for reference, like I said, this dyno reads so low um, you know, I'll get like a, you know, you'll get some tuners where they'll put you on a thousand horsepower car and they'll take that car to the track and that thousand horsepower car will only trap like 155 miles an hour where I can take a thousand horsepower car and they're 160, 165 miles an hour. This dyno is, it's, it's, it's not forgiving at all. But again, all I'm watching for is gain. So a solid 60 horsepower gain from the true dual three inch exhaust over what it had on there and this VTR Trinity intake manifold. Now I did actually, the truck was revving up pretty quick. So I didn't stop personally. My foot didn't come off until like almost 6,900 RPM. So I'm gonna increase the RPM on the dyno because the truck showed to make peak power at 65, 79. Um, and I had the dyno shooting off at 6,600. So I probably need to go up on the RPM on the dyno as well. So we're gonna move, we're gonna bump that up to like 6,900 um, for, when the dyno is going to shut off. Um, but looking at this data log, again, you'll notice where I'm a touch lean. And as y'all saw earlier, when we loaded, heavily loaded the truck and we had the math curve dialed in dead nuts on. So it shows a little bit off, but that's because we're not loading the engine as hard on the dyno now as what we're going to on the street. So the, that first third gear pull we were doing on vehicle simulation, that's going to be more accurate to the street. So we're going to show a little bit lean right now, but when we get on the street, it's going to be a whole different truck. So I'm not going to touch air fuel ratio anymore at all. Um, so but we can look at timing. So again, this truck's on pump gas, pump 93. It is a truck, so we're not going to overtime this thing. Um, so right now, we're, I mean, we're seeing a peak of 20 and a half degrees. That's probably about all it's going to want. So I'll add a degree and we can check that and then um, VE wise, it actually looks like we are still off 
again. Um, so I'm gonna put a little bit more on VE table and we'll do another rip. All right guys, so we're back in the truck on the dyno uh, after I just made that 421.8 horsepower. Um, I made some adjustments to the VE table, math table, the math curve is already perfect. Um, I added one degree of timing and so as long as the coolant temp table doesn't pull that one degree back out, we should see a little bit of a gain. Um, I also increased the dyno RPM to 6,800 instead of 66, so we'll see if it'll show us the peak. Uh, it may or may not. So anyways, let's lock this thing into third gear. All right, torque converter is locked. I'm gonna start the video from outside the truck and let's do another pull. All right, so we got to the 6800. Dino is slowing us back down. Let's unlock this torque converter. We'll stop the data log. Everything looks pretty good. Looks like we had maybe a little bit of torque management come in here. Okay, so I may have to make a torque model adjustment. Uh, anyways, let's get out and uh, check out these numbers. All right, so we have 428.5 horsepower, 368 torque. Uh, so not much of a gain. So we're gonna probably end it off there as far as our watt tuning goes. Um, we can actually click this, and right now we're showing wheel values. We can show engine values. It shows 565.2 horsepower, 497.2 foot pounds. That's probably pretty accurate. I use the engine values a lot and match them up, especially on a car, it usually works out pretty close. Um, so considering this truck doesn't have ported heads, this is a stock headed truck and it's obviously in third gear and it's trying, it doesn't understand that the truck's in only third gear. I'd say it's probably pretty accurate. So anyways, that was 3,600. So let's get this thing off the dyno and get it on the street and do a little bit of trans tuning and get it wrapped up. All right, so we're back up in the truck. Um, I was gonna take it off the dyno and do the trans tuning, but I just figured let's just, it's be easier just for me to walk you guys through some of this stuff on the dyno, that way I'm in a controlled environment. But first thing we have to do is we have to get rid of this little bit of torque management right here. And what this is gonna be from is it's actually, this one's gonna be from our driver demand table. So if you look, this map A, this is a model of our throttle pedal and what we're actually asking for. Now, as I talked about earlier, um, this top axis is gonna be uh, vehicle speed, but in kilometers per hour. And obviously we have accelerator pedal position right here. So if you'll notice inside of here, this number is actually kilowatts. So I actually have a math channel, which I'll, I'll show you guys in another video. I'll show you guys how to do this math channel of kilo, engine kilowatts. But you'll see where we're surpassing it, 401 kilowatts um, is what we're seeing at the peak. So what we're gonna wanna do to get rid of that little bit of um, torque management is I'm gonna take this 100%, actually I'm gonna go from like 74, yeah, we'll go like here and let's do, uh, let's just put in, we'll just multiply it by 1.1. We'll do over 10%. You don't want to start to get crazy with your torque numbers or what you're asking for, because if the truck can't get it, you can actually throw an under torque error as well. Um, so then I'll take where we just did the 74 to 100 at 1.1. I'll go from 50% up and I will interpolate. And then what I'll do is I'll go back to my last saved file and I'll do the compare. And I'm gonna copy how much we added to this one. And we're going to right click and add to this one. Cause we wanna do everything uniform. Like you never wanna make drastic changes with a torque based truck. You wanna do everything you can uniform. So we've got that in, um, let's see where are we at for shifting wise on our trans. So before I was shifting at 6,600. So let's, that should be about right. So I'm gonna save this file real quick and load this into the truck and then we'll do a test trip on the dyno. All right, so file is in. I'm gonna get this data logger started. Um, actually, I'm gonna set up my camera outside. I'll be right back with you. All right, we're back. Camera is set up. 
Um, I really know better than trying to do this truck from a dig at the power level it's at without it being on a drag radial. But we can try it. Uh, it's probably going to end up knocking the tires off of it. So I'm going to roll in and we'll see if it's just going to blow them off or not. A little bit of a flare on the 2-3 shift. Shut it off right there. All right, so as we're looking through here, um, let's see. Now the dyno on the one-two shift is not the greatest. I can obviously duplicate the one-two shift on the street. The dyno, it's almost, it's almost too much gear reduction. Um, for the dyno on the one two but the two three will be right where we need to be um so i'm going to ignore the one two and i will test it on the street um it's like the two three we actually had a little bit of throttle closure on it So I will dig into that as well. But all right, so the first thing we're going to do is I will show you guys how to make it. I'll shut this truck off. Um, I'll show you guys how to make an adjustment for a flare like that. So if you notice right here, you see how it has that little like hook up. Um, that's a sign of not having enough uh, ongoing preset pressure in the trance. So you have ongoing and off going. Ongoing is what's holding the gear that you're in and off going is what's grabbing the next gear. So if that flare, if we would have actually dropped straight down and had a flare like right here, we would need more off going. Right here, we need more ongoing. Um, so I'm gonna add that. So where that's gonna be is that's gonna be under, um, it's gonna be under shift pressure, adaptive, and see where on coming is. Um, and that was our two, three shift. So what I'm gonna do is let's, let's do 1.2. So we're gonna add 1.2 to that one and let's go. So we have the regular one and special. So special is gonna be like tow haul. Obviously whatever we have in regular drive, it's also gonna want in tow haul as well. So we've got that taken care of. Um, let me go through and I'm gonna just kind of glance at my other settings real quick. Uh, yep. So all that stuff looks good. Shift timing. Um, yeah, we're good. Okay. So I'm going to load that this file in and let's see, 66. Okay. So we should be fine. So that should be my only change on the two, three. And like I said, I'll dial in the one, two on the street or I'll attempt to, if it's not blowing the tires off. So let's load this file in and then we'll try it again. All right, so as y'all saw, I was digging through the data log and as I was looking, it looks like we're actually trending just a little bit uh, lean up top. And like when I'm doing vehicle simulation, like, so that's the, that's the really accurate way of, of doing my tuning. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead on and make that change as well. Um, so I noticed it was 9,600 up. Um, so we're gonna go 9,600 up on our math frequency. And again, we're gonna follow our trend line. So. 2.51%, we're gonna go up here, go oh, 2.51%, make sure 2D looks good, it does. And we're gonna load that into the engine side before we do another rip. All right, so we're back in the truck, just made that oncoming preset change for the two, three shift. Um, made that little bit of a math adjustment. So let's go on and try to do another dig. Again, ignore the one-two shift on this dyno like this. Like it's it's not as good um, for 6L80 uh, trans tuning from anything higher. Like if we're between zero to 40 mile per hour, it's not that good. From a 40 roll, it's perfectly fine. But for whatever reason, the one-two shift isn't the greatest on the dyno. I'll have to do that on the street if it'll even take it. 
Um, but anyways, we'll still roll through and try to do uh, a dig all the way. So. Still had a little bit of a flare. Just going to back it down. We know we need to make adjustments. All right, so if you notice, we still have that little bit of a flare there, but it's not as big as what it was um, before. So I will add some more ongoing, and we are oncoming, and we will go from there. All right, so we're loading in a file um, with the two, three shift with more oncoming preset pressure. So again, basically how the, these transmissions work, which once I do my 6L80 video, which with where the subscribers we're at right now, we're, we're close enough where within this week, I'll do the 6L80 video. Um, but you have, a, you have a shift speed, it's desired shift time that the EC was looking for. And it uses ongoing or oncoming and offcoming preset pressures to get to achieve that shift time. So that's what I'm doing. You wanna get rid of all the flares, you wanna make sure it's happy. So we're gonna log into the scanner. And as I showed you guys the other day, I want you guys to watch this again. Anytime you make that much of a change, like the first 20%, we really didn't have to change it. But this time we need to reset adaptives again. Uh, so you're gonna to go up to the power button and you're gonna go transmission and you're gonna click this trans adapt reset, trans adapt preset, trans fast adapt reset. I have no idea why my screen looks like this. It's been doing that ever since I got this laptop. Don't know, but I can still see this stuff. So anyway, so that's done. So usually what they'll do is they'll flare just a touch uh, when you first do that. So we're gonna pull this thing down and check these shifts. So that was a pretty solid shift. Had a little bit of a flare on the two, three, but so right now we're actually watching our shift times and you'll see that we're actually achieving a pretty, pretty quick shift for sure. All right. So all that looks good. So let's slow back down and let's do another rip again. Now, again, the one, two shift, it's probably going to hit the rev limiter, which I probably need to even raise a rev limiter. I don't know what, I, what it's even set to right now. Let's see. So look at the rev limiter on gen five truck. Same with any of them. It's engine fuel cut off. We're at 7,100 on here. In gear, we're at 7,000. Uh, yeah, 7,000. Okay. So if it tries to hit the flare, it's gonna it'll close the throttle to try to make sure the flare doesn't happen. But anyways, we're back on shift mile or speed in mile per hour. Um, so let's go ahead and try to do a little test roll again. There we go. That was a really good two three shift. Alright, that's just too much mile an hour for this drive shaft. So let's stop the log. That two three shift was I mean money. So you'll look, we have no more flare right here anymore. So we know two three is good. I mean you can see how quick that shift happened too. Uh two three shift. Yeah, I mean a, a tenth of a second for a shift time. You can't really get one of these transmissions to shift any faster than that. So again, the one, two on the dyno, it's as good as it's gonna get on the dyno. Um, on the street, it's gonna be a whole different ball game. So anyways, like I was telling you guys, I will do more on the 6L80 stuff. I just wanted you to kind of see what, what little changes I'm making, what I'm looking for. But just remember, ongoing is the flare while you're still in the gear. And then off going is gonna be the, if you get a flare after it's in gear. So let's get this thing strapped or unstrapped and let's get out on the street. So I want to give y'all a close up on this thing, just since we didn't give you one earlier. 
um, the MSD plug wires, uh, would say the NGK 6510 plugs. A uh, customer provided that oil catch can. I don't know what brand it is, and I don't know if it's going to work. But anyways, BTR Truck Trinity intake, LT5 throttle body, cold air inductions intake. Uh, I know the guys were saying they're going to repowder coat it because they had to do a bunch of fab work and scratched it up. Um, so that'll get taken care of. Again, BTR 220 camshaft with a four degree phaser lockout. Uh, this is stock heads. So, you know, a lot of guys are gonna be complaining about the power level. It's not milled heads, it's not ported heads, it's just bone stock heads. It does have rods and pistons. Um, but again, true dual exhaust with the, with the three inch. Anyways, I just wanna give you guys a good look. I mean, look at how good this intake manifold looks. I mean, is that not a pretty intake manifold in this truck? Anyways, let's get in the truck and uh, go for a drive. All right, so let's go for a drive. Um, I need a drink and I need some air conditioner. So it's a good thing about taking them out on the street after the fact when they have air conditioner is get to get to enjoy some coolness for a little bit. So we're gonna go out, go for a cruise. I'm gonna feel how the trans uh, shifts. I'm gonna attempt to do a one-two shift and try to get it to where it doesn't spin. So hopefully it doesn't spin and hopefully it doesn't launch this webcam into the back glass. Um, but overall, super nice truck. I don't know if y'all, what all y'all can see, but I mean, the customer's done leather upgrade. He did a center console. It's got a big, like, I don't know, almost like tablet kind of radio in it. So just, just a really sweet little truck, but it is, it's a single cab, short bed, two wheel drive. Um, not sure, but he did put a two inch lift kit on there. Not necessarily my taste, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, this, this is going to be a really fun truck, especially once this thing has a D1SC or D1X on it. Um, that's what it was going to get in the winter time. So that's the reason why I wasn't too carried away about getting every ounce of power. Um, this is just going to be a fun street truck for the, for the customer. So I think his end goal was like wanting to see like 600 to 650 wheel on that dyno, um, which in this truck uh, application like this, if it had a drag rail on it, would run, I mean, mid to like mid tens you know, 1060s, 1070s, if it makes it kind of power on that dyno. So anyways, right now what I'm doing is I'm going to keep an eye out on shift times, make sure we're hitting those correctly. Um, I don't want it to shift too firm. I want you to be able to feel it, but I just don't want it to be like knock your teeth out kind of feel. Um, yeah, we're just going to go over it. The um, shift schedule, I also want to make sure we're not locking it up too soon. This is a good size camshaft. so. I'd like to see lock up, I don't know, probably 13 or 1400 RPMs when it actually comes in. Um, and again, like with this, with this style setup, I only lock them in fourth gear and above. Um, and we, we don't do it at wide open throttle either. Like even though this thing has a triple disc converter in it, I've noticed that the trucks are actually faster if you leave them unlocked. Uh, the only time I've actually had a truck go faster at the track with the lock up at wide open throttle um, is if it's got a twin screw blower on it. So if it's got a twin screw on it, lock it up up top. But otherwise, we leave them unlocked. Now, if it's an eight speed truck, eight speed truck, you can pretty much leave locked all the time, pretty much no matter what's done to the vehicle. Um, so anyways, well, we're cruising along, uh, also watching closed loop stuff, making sure uh, to watch short term fuel trims. Um, I'm also going to be watching my V table and making subtle changes as we go. Uh, but right now, I just need to swing by the store and grab a drink and just enjoy driving this truck for a little bit. So we're still out on a test drive, and I'm going to try to find us a spot to do somewhat of a dig. Uh, obviously, we won't be able to go from an immediate dig just because of the tires that this thing has on there. I think they're like some Nitto or Toyo. It's some type of good street tire, but still, uh, it's just not enough for this truck. Um, especially since this truck has like a two inch lift on it or something. So anyways, we're gonna cruise out and just before I hear it, and I know I'm gonna go through the comments and probably see it, but I know there's plenty of trucks out there faster. Again, I'm showing you a customer's truck as to what I'm doing with this. Um, I'm not going out to abuse it. I'm not gonna do massive burnouts. This truck is not what I would consider to be fast. Does it run good for a truck? It does, but uh, before I hear in the comments of how your truck's faster than this one or this one's slow, you know, your truck's probably slow to me. Like, unless you're trapping 140 plus in the eighth or 170 plus in the quarter, I don't want to hear about it. Like, we're just, we're here to have a good time, okay? This is this customer's build. So anyways, we're going to go find a spot to do a dig. We're going to do a trash control on. Um, this truck also doesn't have the Shane Hines switch, so Stabilitrack's going to be also with us. 
So what it's going to do is, is you're going to notice when I lay into it, it's going to immediately pull throttle and pull timing. And it's going to keep timing out as it's trying to maintain traction. It's going to keep timing out. Um, and then as the truck starts to hook, um, it will put timing back in there. And then it's probably going to have to rip some timing out on the 2-3 shift more so than normal. Um, because it, it should spin on the 2-3 shift as well. So... I'm going to try to do the best I can to film the gauge cluster at the same time. I'm hoping the webcam doesn't fly back into the back glass. Uh, if you guys have any idea on how to use or, or software I can use to have the web or a GoPro integrate with my laptop to where I can run the data logs and have the GoPro as a webcam so I can actually suction cup it to the windshield or something, that would make my life a lot easier. Uh, I know that I can do webcam on some applications with GoPro like Zoom and stuff like that, but I haven't found an actual like screen sharing app. So if y'all have anything that y'all know about, uh, please drop in the comments and let me know. I need help on some of this stuff. Hopefully y'all are seeing my improvements in my videos. Obviously I've only been doing this for like, what, uh, two weeks now maybe. So I'm going to continue to get better. Uh, also I'm going to constantly bring cameos in from guys that y'all are going to recognize so hopefully y'all like a little cameo from Mike Galley. I think he's going to do some more videos with me later on um, but obviously we'll have you know some videos with JH and, and uh, Cletus and uh, I'm sure we'll get George on here and we'll have we'll have some good people on here. So we are almost to my spot to do a dig. Uh, I'm going to get turned around and try to get planted so I'm going to go on and get my phone out and try to get set up. So we will get to the end of this little straight stretch and I'll turn around and get back. But yeah, I need I also need to get me a draggy too. So this webcam, as y'all can see, it's a little uh it's a little bumpy. It's just like literally this is just like a Logitech 1080p uh, webcam just sitting on the dash of this truck. So you're probably gonna start to lose sight of me here soon. But biggest thing that I'm concerned about is y'all being able to see what my screen's showing. Um, to see all the closed loop stuff, how it's working, and uh, you'll be able to see, see like my shift speeds and stuff. Um, but anyways, keep in mind, again, this is traction control on. And we're going to get turned around. There's a bunch of cars also turning on this street, so they're going to try to pull in behind me. So we're going to wait for them to go. The local guys probably know the, exactly where I'm at. This is our little, uh, it's just outside of, uh, just outside of the border in Mexico. Um, but anyways, let's, uh, let's rip it now. Blowing tires off. This thing was spinning, I mean, we were spinning at like 50 and 60 miles an hour still. So these tires, they were, they was fighting for sure. So anyways, I'm going to rip over to a parking lot and we will check the data log. And so I can show you guys what I'm looking at. Trans seem to feel pretty good. Um, but obviously it's really hard to do trans tuning when the truck is just blowing tires off of that's why I try to get guys which obviously this is a street truck so I don't even know if he even has a set of drag radials on it um, but ideally um, you know when I'm tuning cars I like for them to come with a drag radial um, that way I can take it out and and actually get it to somewhat hook so anyways let's get to a parking lot and we'll go through this data log alright so I just want to run over this data log real quick with you guys on that little pull we just did. So you'll look through and see as we're taking off, tires start to break loose. Um, so what happens is, is when they break loose, obviously the traction control comes in. So you're going to see traction control is going to be known as chassis on your predicted axle torque source right here. Um, so chassis comes in, uh, it's pulled us down to negative 13 degrees of timing and actually get the truck to hook up. It also decided it wanted to close the throttle body down to 44.4%. Um, so then the truck hooks up and it starts to feed power back in so you'll see the throttle is coming back open and right now this is 12 degrees out and you'll see that I mean literally in first gear I mean first gear is almost going to be useless with these tires. Um, we're up to 40 miles an hour before it actually puts full timing back into the truck. So before you guys go talking about oh my truck's faster I get it. This is that was a kind of dusty uh, road. Um, we're on a street tire. It doesn't have traction or like traction bars on it. Um, it doesn't have any suspension upgrades. It actually has a two inch lift on here, so it's not ideal at all. Um, so yes, your truck is probably faster, but 
I don't need y'all to come in here talking about how fast your truck is. Like, unless it traps 140 in the eighth or more, or 170 or more in the quarter mile, you ain't impressing me. So let's not have that conversation. So, anyways, uh, as we're scrolling through here, you'll see we made the shift at 68.57, um, which is not bad. Trash control was still just, it was just fighting us. Um, so we made it through the shift. Um, you'll see the truck started to unload again. Uh, 60 miles an hour, we're breaking loose again. Um, so you see it's going to start closing the throttle back down again. Uh, it's pulling timing back out of the truck again. Like here, here's where, like if you look at this green line right here, see that little hump? That's where it's breaking loose. So this truck is, is fast enough to, to break loose at 60. And that's, that's in a pull that we're, we're already planted. Um, and it still has enough power to, to rip it loose at 60. So again, you'll see where track, uh, traction control or the predicted axle torque is chassis. Um, so the truck finally does hook back up and puts power back in and we finish out the pool. So that's what it looks like on a log. Um, again, this truck really is going to need a drag radial for me to do the full trans tune. But the trans feels good. Cruising around part throttle, it shifts good. Um, when, the, when the trans seemed to somewhat hook, it felt good. It's just, again, it's hard, it's hard to tell on this stuff. Um, I mean, even to the point that the truck actually, if you look at injector pulse width, the truck even shut off fuel to try to get that trans to shift as good as it can. So anyways, that's how to look at a data log on a, from a dig in one of these trucks. Obviously we're gonna go over this, all this settings and stuff more as we get into my more in-depth videos. Um, let's get back to the shop. All right, guys, so that's going to conclude today's video on this uh, 2016 Chevy Silverado. Uh, obviously, I'm going to have more Gen 5 videos coming soon. Um, at the rate we're going now, we should end up, uh, this, the 6L80 video will probably be my next video. So it'll be a long video, and it'll go more in depth. I just wanted to show you a little bit of what I was looking at today. Um, but obviously, we're going to go through all the Gen 5 idle stuff. We're going to go through all the VVT stuff, the torque modeling. We're going to do all that stuff. It's going to take me, I mean probably a hundred plus videos to actually do gen five any kind of justice but just kind of wanted to give you all an idea of what i look at um hopefully you guys enjoyed this one though um just a fun little truck i mean the truck gets down for what it is but anyways thanks for the uh likes and the subscribes um leave me a comment anything i need to change um again if you haven't already please do subscribe uh, i'm gonna keep this stuff interesting and it's gonna get more and more rowdy uh, anyways guys have a good day